And so um, uh, we've come up with a configuration that took a lot of work to come to a hardware stack that we were happy with. And so we're going with um, a, a custom chipset that uh, has been developed with uh, a lot of uh, um, considerations in mind, being it portable and also uh, being able to scale with the Monero blockchain uh, for the foreseeable future. And so we're starting with um, an octa-core processor and 16 GB of RAM, and we'll be able to have a terabyte or a couple of terabytes. We're going with one terabyte of solid state storage, and that is um, a full-size SSD um, that is on board. And, uh, I'll, um, and that's important because um, a lot of these chipsets have uh, external adapters that plug into the primary chipset, and then you'd be able to plug in a full-size SSD. Or, and, and so this causes slowdowns, and so we've incorporated the M2 uh, slot onto the chipset itself. Um, with its own heatsink, and the GPU will, uh, it's quad core, uh, it's not going to be used much because the CPU is going to be doing uh, all of the processing of transactions uh, running the Monero daemon, and uh, our power we have USB in, and uh, that's useful because if you're out in the field, and we considered this possibility as well, of um, it being deployed out in the field, it being in a backpack uh, somewhere, um, and you know, um, things of this nature. So um, it, it is low powered and it will support multiple USB-C power sources. Um, and uh, uh, the minimum uh, wattage will uh, be repealed uh, uh, in some time. And connectivity was also important. Most chipsets do support uh, Ethernet and Wi-Fi, but we uh, wanted to um, get the maximum bandwidth possible uh, to support the node uh, incoming and outgoing um, connections. And so we've got a 2.5 gigabit, gigabit Ethernet and the latest um, Wi-Fi 6E with Bluetooth. And uh, as well as multiple other uh, USB C's in which you could poss possibly pl plug in external storage with its own blockchain, even though you don't need it, you have internal storage. Um, but other accessories uh, could potentially be used uh, plugged in to these uh, additional ports. And we also have uh, a, a screen that will uh, allow you to control uh, your node. And so the the highlights of uh, of our implementation is that we have an unpruned uh, node and it's not running any other program um, uh, like some um, uh, nodes kind of want to tend to do. They they want to try to support blockchain and Ethereum and all this. Uh, the focus for uh, for me and and for Doug as well is uh, create something that. Um, and that has security implications as well, being, uh, and uh, since we're running Monero D natively on Linux, um, we're able to get a much more secure and uh, faster package. And we have um, Tor and I2P support as well, and uh, a fully fledged LWS admin. This is useful for uh, merchants or, you know, users with many wallets where you can keep track of um, incoming um, transactions using um, instant light wallets. And so, yeah, the touchscreen, you can control your node on your device um, or from the web. And that includes a desktop or mobile platforms. And uh, um, we, we've also incorporated a, a dedicated recovery button. Uh, things go wrong and we wanted to make this experience of the node as seamless as possible. And uh, and, and, you know, uh, so we've developed a, a system where um, your configuration is backed up. And so we had to develop the database for that, uh, you know, all putting all variables uh, into one JSON file and, and then uh, backing that up and, and, and so on. And so, um, yep, we're running uh, in uh, Ubuntu LTS. Um, and we started with PyNode XMR because uh, it does support all types of single board computers. But with that as a starting point, we started to trim and 
um, uh, tweak uh, according to uh, our particular hardware uh, integrations like the onboard SSD and we have onboard uh, EMMC storage as well. That's uh, that is used for backups and things of this nature, so that the SSD and and the CPU can focus primarily on running the node, and it's not, it's not bogged down in any case. Um, uh, we did consider lower possibilities for um, the storage capacities, with the blockchain currently sitting at um, current less than two hundred gigabytes and and growing at roughly. 60 to 80 gigabytes a year and and as we implement uh, surface that that could change as well and so there's a, a need for a lot of flexibility in the um, in this the storage and other um, uh, hardware capacities and so we decided to go with a minimum of a terabyte of storage and this will support five years of blockchain growth uh, possibly even more and so we've gone over the recovery process where you can, uh, it will, um, you can uh, build Monero from source um, and the code is all up online. Uh, this, uh, the code will be open source. And, um, um, and so you, uh, and you'll be able to kind of see what it's doing behind the scenes of uh, the recovery process where it can, uh, you can, uh, erase the blockchain and uh, start syncing from scratch if you so wish or in case things go wrong. And so um, uh, there are other small things uh, that like the real-time clock, which um, not all single board computers have, but is definitely recommended for security purposes. And so we've uh, made efforts to include an onboard uh, module of that onto the chipset and um, just something that uh, is uh, Monero specific, uh, and also we've developed. Um, uh, well, I have developed a custom case uh, for this um, uh, chipset, and it's uh, bespoke uh, and designed from the ground up. And we've considered the thermal uh, abilities and um, the overall life cycle. We want to be able to support this for five plus years, uh, and. Um, the reliability of these chips are, are already well established and well known. And so uh, given the right circumstances and heat management, they will indeed go that far. Do you love coffee and Monero as much as we do? Consider making gratuitous.org your daily cup. Pay with Monero for premium fresh beans. And if you like what you taste, Send a digital cash tip directly to the farmers that made it possible. Proceeds help us grow this channel, Gratuitous, and Monero. It's, um, it's a CNC uh, machined aluminum case, and uh, it's designed internally so that it kind of um, acts as a passive heat sink. And uh, then there are, of course, dedicated heat sinks for the CPU and SSD, and uh, the top is removable uh, just for ease of access. And of course, it has all of these buttons, the power, uh, the reset, recovery, and the boot buttons. Um, and just in case we want to uh, be able to boot from microSD uh, or um, the onboard ERMC. And the, um, this comes around to uh, once we have Monero D working on uh, on our chipsets, and uh, uh, including the uh, native block explorer and the Monero WS, um, we have uh, the GPU kind of sitting idle, and this um, this issue kind of goes beyond just our particular chipset um, because even though I would like to try to implement. Uh, in parallel GPU processing of those transactions. And so we could expect uh, um, a bump in the speed and uh, 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 to a factor of uh, the number of uh, GPU cores that we have. And so we have four cores sitting idle and um, using OpenCL protocol, it is possible to encode uh, transaction um, uh, processing, Monero transaction processing, 
uh, and the challenge to that is uh, the code has to be written for all the past versions of Monero. But I think we could start with uh, um, when the first uh, uh, versions of Ring CD were implemented and work backwards uh, from that. And so I am kind of um, still, uh, this is one of the items that remains pending. And the implications of, of this uh, particular implementation would go beyond our uh, chipset because anyone with idle GPU processing power could potentially be able to um, uh, get much uh, more performance, um, uh, you know, where otherwise uh, you would have uh, 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 your GPU sitting idle. And uh, yep, that brings us to uh, the many people. Uh, this has been a global project uh, with many different time zones. And so all the way from Taiwan to the United States and um, our manufacturers um, and uh, many different developers. And uh, along the way, um, a key member of the of whom, um, Arctic Mine and Mr. Cabanas, who uh, helped a lot with the scaling aspects of uh, uh, the vision of, of seeing a be able to uh, factor in the many variables uh, uh, for future projection. And Dan Sherman, of course, who created Pinode XMR, uh, uh, without his project, um, uh, it would uh, uh, um, um, it, it's it's been a huge boon to all kinds of uh, people with idle Raspberry Pis lying around, and and so it was indeed the the start for us. Um, and uh, definitely, Dan has been uh, great. And uh, the other the developer, Brenda, who has um, kind of uh, customized and tweaked and been our main uh, developer behind um, behind this uh, Nodo architecture and our manufacturers as well. And um, I wanted to show you some images of the prototypes. Um, uh, bear in mind that uh, this is uh, subject to change, our final prototype. Um, we do have um, old prototypes um, around which, uh, um, which are already obsolete. And so the 16 GB configuration uh, is, is uh, undergoing production, the chipsets right now. And so I hope to be able to show you the actual demonstration at MoneroCon. If any of you um, are plan to be there or watch the stream, I, I, it is on the schedule uh, to uh, have um, actual uh, custom cases for custom chipsets um, and be able to talk about the, the system and show you guys the interface. And so um, I expect a uh, final uh, shipments, the uh, consumer uh, shipments to go out in uh, sometime in September. And um, it, it uh, again, uh, um, we do hope that uh, this node uh, for a host of reasons, uh, uh, running your own node is, is uh, and why it's beneficial. Um, uh, essentially adding much more privacy to your own transactions and also contributing to the network. And we imagine uh, um, a, a huge number of these uh, nodes um, causing an impact in um, and mitigating a lot of uh, security vulnerabilities like remote node uh, issues. Um, there are complexities to this issue um, because if you are running a public node, which you can do on this, in which it's accepting incoming uh, transactions and passing them along, and sometimes uh, uh, it, it, when it accepts your transaction, sometimes it, it does um, uh, send it along. Uh, and so uh, uh, malicious nodes do remain a threat, but in private mode, uh, I... Um, it is definitely better to have your run uh, node running 24-7 as um, if you were to open up uh, your app or whatever it is and start syncing with the blockchain and you finish your transaction and um, it downloads a bunch of blocks and you finish your transaction and say you just quit the app, you're done. 
and uh, when you open that up to do the next transaction and you know it starts syncing blocks again from that remote node that could also potentially be used as as a, as a marker and so um, um, it's one of the reasons why uh, running your own personal node uh, uh, is beneficial and uh, by not worrying about other applications running and having a dedicated and optimized uh, system doing that for you 24-7 uh, um, is um, definitely one of the better uh, or most secure ways of uh, transacting um, Monero. And so uh, uh, thank you very much for your time and attention. And uh, I do look forward to... Um, um, uh, speaking to uh, uh, all of you again soon, as uh, this has been my first introduction to the Manir community. I've been a follower of uh, the uh, whole philosophical aspect of Monero for quite some time, and and of course I am a dedicated Monero nut. Uh, I don't care much about uh, uh, the other cryptocurrencies, and so. The, the focus definitely is Monero, and we hope to be able to deliver on a seamless uh, Monero node experience. Um, thank you very much.